welcome to my first YouTube video. My name is Steven. On Instagram, I'm Steven the Groomer. On Facebook, I'm Barker and Steven. Um, and I wanted to talk to you about me today. I wanted to introduce myself, my business a little bit, and give some tips for those of you that are groomers about starting your own business and taking care of your own clients and stuff like that. And just keeping your um, skills sharp and up to date and stuff. So let's start with me. I started grooming at in 2015 in Petco in Washington State. I was very lucky. I had a great um, pet stylist mentor. My manager was awesome. She was not only like good at grooming, but she was also very good with the dogs. So I learned a lot of um, like ways to hold dogs when you needed to bathe them. I learned how to work with a lot of aggressive dogs because she worked with all the aggressive dogs. Um, <clears throat> Trixie's got trying to lick her toe without me noticing, but I can see her. Um, so I worked there as a bather for a little while, um, training to be, well, technically I was a, a pet stylist apprentice, um, but there you start bathing and you learn how to bathe the dogs, you learn how to um, dry them off correctly, and then you start taking your own clients as you get more and more comfortable. Um, and you get paid to do it. So if you are interested in grooming, I would recommend looking into Petco and PetSmart to start um, to get some clients and to get some uh, experience in the field. Um, I think you have to stay there for a year. I didn't, I had a lot of weird situations going on, um, so I left, but um, yeah, it's cheaper than grooming school because you get paid to do it. I didn't go to any grooming schools. I just learned through Petco and through um, other groomers. Um, yeah, so Petco's a good option if you're looking to get into grooming, but you cannot financially afford classes. Um, so I started there. And then I started taking some of my own clients to kind of supplement my income with a regular job and I realized that um, I wanted to just groom, groom, groom. So I took a job at a little mom and pop store, learned some um, good things from the groomers there. I learned how to groom doodles from one of the groomers there. Um, specifically, she was really great at um, grooming doodles, so I worked with her to learn about that. There was another groomer there who was really great at um, terriers. I learned how to do a lot of like Westie cuts. She was awesome at Westie cuts. Um, and then I moved to another salon where I worked um, for about a year with them. Um, I'll do another video about that another time. but. Um, I've recently left to start my own business and I, I have, let's see, I think I've got like 20 or so clients in my roster right now. It's not enough for me to get by with grooming on its own, but right now it is, it's good. It's what I need. So let's talk about, um, let's see, let's talk about how to keep your, if you're a groomer, how to keep your, um, skills up to date. So one of the things that I've had for a while, is I've got this dog breed encyclopedia and it's got all sorts of dog breeds in it. I don't know if it's backwards or not, but it's just basically basic information about the dogs. And what I've also done, do I have those in this pile? Mm, I don't. I don't know where those went. I also had a bunch of <clears throat> dog show grooming books like best in show all sorts of stuff like that because they have the best in the breed and this shows you I think better than some of um, the drawings that you get in the grooming books how the coat is supposed to fall what the breed standards are supposed to look like and it gives you they give you a pretty good idea about um, the shape of the dogs as well. Let me see, where do I have some, some good examples? I should pull these up first. Whatever, this is just going to be however for the rest of my life. <laughs> um, yeah. Things like this. Um, versus, you know, the drawings that you get in the um, professional grooming books. I think the the 
looking at the best of show photos gives you a better idea of, you know, exactly, especially for things like terriers. Do I even have? Oh, and spaniels, because these kind of cuts are a little hard to figure out, especially the, you know, the skirt and the legs. Um, so if you have pictures like these that give you a good reference, a good real life reference of what the dog should look like when it's done with a professional cut. And so I have all those references. I keep this book with my grooming equipment and um, it was easier to cut the photos out and put them in like with the dog breeds. So I don't have to flip through the books every time I needed a breed. Um, so let's do that. Another way to keep my skills up is I am subscribed to the Groomer to Groomer magazine. It's a free magazine. I highly recommend it because you get all sorts of product reviews, things about like articles about how to solve grooming problems. Um, they also do a lot of information on specific grooms. So this episode or this um, volume is about uh, hand stripping, it's about pet nutrition, um, and they also have a lot of stuff for, where is it, oh, the grooming expos, that's what I wanted to show, grooming expos are great, if you can't physically go to grooming expos, because money, which I totally understand, I haven't gone to a grooming expo because of money, um, see what you can find in these books, or, um, like the Groomer to Groomer magazines, um, Best in Show um, magazines and books, or find them online. A lot of um, grooming expos will have like live coverage of the um, talks that they have, but they're really a great thing to go to. Here's all of them, real quick. <laughs> they just happen to be here. Um, also, they have the pictures of all the creative grooms, which I really love. Oh, I really want to do creative grooms someday. Um, so these are good to have, keep, and I don't have that book over here. I cut out articles that I like that are interesting to me um, so I can have a reference of them somewhere else. Um, another magazine I would subscribe to, um, I believe it, it's also free, is the Ryan's Pet Supplies cat Catalog because it'll not only keep you up to date on new products, like new shampoos and new shears and, you know, new um, kinds of dryers and stuff, but you can order them directly through here. You can order them online, and it's a good way to just kind of make sure you have everything you need. I enjoy getting them because I love shopping. Um, yeah. So those are the magazines that I have free. Please, please, please subscribe to Groomer to Groomer. Um, like they, the Buyer's Guide, 2018 Buyer's Guide. This is such great information. Um, it gives you places to buy toys, company directories, um, places to buy shears, where to get your stuff. Um, sharpened, mobile grooming van prices. You can... You know, good source, good source, get it. Um, I keep myself organized. I have an online booking source where um, people can go right in and connect to my booking site and make their own appointments, but I also keep a <laughs> nice planner. Um, let me go to a month that I've done. So nothing's happened in January yet. Let me show you what happened in December. Okay. So I write down the grooms that I have on the days that I have them. I make sure I have the times. All their information is stored electronically, so I don't need to write all of their like addresses and stuff down or any of the notes on the grooming. Um, I try and make sure to, when I take notes, not only take notes about the dog, but also like the family as well. Like, okay, this family has a young kid. So, um, just to be aware when I go there, there's a young kid. Um, I take a lot of notes on my business as well. I'll go into these in depth another time. Um, but it's important to, and these are not my first edition of the notes. These are like four or five edition. I have written notes. I, I start notebooks 
and I'll write like four pages in the notebook and then I have to go through and pull those pages out and write what's actually <laughs> useful information all together. Um, but I'll go through that, that another time. I also have all of my tools here. This is my grooming table, my mobile grooming table. It's not very mobile right now. Um, I'm just using it to store all my stuff on. I have two grooming arms. I've got this purple one, which is very long, but I'm missing the screw for right here. And I have this silver one, which is kind of short, and I use it on smaller dogs. I have all of my clips. This right here is a hound hammock brand. I highly recommend their brand and looking into them. This is what I use for older dogs. Put it under their bellies or underneath their arm and their shoulder to kind of help support them up. I have all my bath equipment in here. Cotton balls for ear cleaning. Oh, this is making a weird light. Blueberry facial, tear free, good for faces. This is the shampoo that I'm using right now. It smells nice, which is why I like it. Um, I like Earth Bath as well. This is my shampoo hose, my bath shower hose in case the house that I go in doesn't have one of the shower heads that I can use. I have my, oops, this pile all fell over, my quick stop, styptic powder, it's that yellow, oh, this stuff's like really fine, yellow powder you put on the dog's toenails in case you trim it too short and it bleeds, which does happen. Um, I have hairspray. I have mousse. Those are both just human hairspray and human mousse. Fine for the dogs. It's just to help make like poodle top knots stand up, mohawks stay, stuff like that. Yes, someone needs it. Oops. It's gonna be kind of a long introductory video, I'm sorry. That's okay. What am I sitting on, you ask? My skateboard. I've also got my Dremel. Charger for my Dremel. This is the pet Dremel, but you can also buy them at um, Lowe's, Home Depot, any kind of uh, hardware store, probably a little bit cheaper. I have my clipper combs. They go from an eighth of an inch up to an inch. They're wall. I use them because they're the first ones I ever used, so they were the first ones I bought. Um, they go over a 30 blade. They fit on top of Andis blades, which is nice because that's what I use. Here are my blades. Whoops. Toenail trimmers. Itty bitty, itty bitty, itty bitty scissors for when you got the eye gunkies that are right here or right here, or if you're doing a schnauzer's ear and you gotta get right along the edge of the ear, or if you're tipping a Yorkie's ear. Sometimes it's nice to have itty bitty scissors. Um, my hemostats. They're curved and they lock, so when I go like this, they click and then they're stuck. So what I do is I put the, what is my ear powder? Oh, the ear powder and the ear cleaner is in here. Put the ear powder on the hair in the ear, put it in, grab it with the hair with my hemostats, twirl it around so it gets nice and tight around the uh, hemostat like this and pull some of the little, little hairs out and then pull the big long hair out and then that's how you get the hair out of dog's ear. I will show you with a dog someday when I have a dog to show you. Trixie doesn't grow hair in your ears. So I have all my blades. Andis. This is my five. I have my initials engraved on it. Ten. Seven. The seven is a little different than the five. It has, instead of a metal back, a ceramic back. Uh, it stays sharper for longer, but it is a little bit more likely to break if you drop it than the metal one. Um, my four, I don't use it as much as my five. My five is like my typical go-to blade. Um, my 30, it has broken teeth, so I don't use it by itself. I just use it underneath a clipper blade because it is unsafe to use um, on its own. curry comb for bath time, 
for dogs that uh, have short hair. Dalmatians, beagles, French bulldogs, pugs. I have my shears. Oops. These are my, I don't use these ones very often. Where are my bitters? My thinners. You see it's got one straight edge top and one this blade down here has like comb. It's like a comb. So when I snip the hair it doesn't cut. It cuts like every other hair. So I use it for blending faces. And to get rid of all of those harsh lines that I make with my straights. And these are the two or my Regulars. So these are my straight shears. You can see they're nice and long. They're as long as my face. I don't use them on the little, little dogs if I don't have to. Um, they're a little bit offset. Or not offset, but back set. I don't know. And then I have my curves. When you are starting out, I would recommend um, using the thinners to kind of um, work your way into getting used to making snips with the long straight edges um, because if you use the thinners you can kind of ease your way into seeing what you need versus the straights where you need kind of a confident eye to be like one two three four those are the edges okay now I'm gonna start just going right around okay done um, <clears throat> I have my clippers right here they are Andis Oh, I guess I am going to bring it down a little bit. This blue thing is a uh, pain in the ass to put on, but it's supposed to keep my cord from tangling around itself. Um, it kind of works. And this clipper blade, one speed. It's lasted me. I bought it like right at the end of 2015. Oh my god, it's 2019. It's been th four years, I guess, since I've been grooming. Oh, my brush is up here. My slicker brushes are these ones with all the bristles. My arm's just getting tired. Ugh. I guess I could bring it down. Hold on. This is my undercoat rake, which I use for like huskies or goldens, anything that's got kind of a thick undercoat. Got two kinds of slicker brushes. I got this one, which is my hard one. This one's a little bit softer. I have my soft finish brush. So like if, if I have a uh, Yorkie or something with very fine hair, I'll use this over the top at the end with a little bit of either hairspray or um, finishing spray just kind of to get any flyaways to sit down flat. Something with thin hair. Uh, I got the combs. Got me combs. Another tangled in there. Got my big boy, my little boy. I like the color blue, so they're blue. Um, what else do I have? Uh, this is just a carrying bag. Got my muzzle. Oops. And I think that's about it. So that's all my grooming equipment. That's um, a little bit of my backstory and some of the magazines that I was subscribed to to keep my skills up to date. Um, all right, this was kind of a mess, but that's okay. I liked it, I had a good time. Um, if you have any questions, let me know, and we will see you next time, bye.